Hi everyone, my name is Jean Lawrence and I am here to offer some practice tips for our quarantine life right now. Today I'm going to talk about five different ways to develop your ear in your trumpet practicing or at least how to utilize and grow your ear. Because I always grew up hearing people say, you're only as good as your ear. But it took me a while to figure out what that meant and how to apply it to my practicing. Um, so I've sort of broken hearing down into five different layers. And I incorporate those layers into my practicing, specifically into my etude practice. So the five different ways. Interval hearing. How well can you sing each of your intervals? Deep listening to your product. What sound are you putting out into the room? Listening to the sound that you want to make. It's kind of the opposite of uh, the second layer, which is uh, as you play, you imagine you're producing your favorite trumpet player sound. Four, listening across to your section mates. This usually applies when we are playing uh, in a section or in a chamber group, but it can apply to quarantine life if we are making an acapella video or something similar to that. And then five, listening down, listening to the depths of harmony. Even if those harmonies aren't existing in the room, you can still listen for the chord changes inside your head. And so, um, I can kind of share how I might plug each one of these into some etude practice. Uh, first of all, I might pick one etude that's medium hard, uh, depending on where I am um, in my practicing, and I might pick a phrase or two and apply all of these steps to different repetitions. Uh, so interval hearing. You can obviously do this by singing, by buzzing. And sometimes what I do is I'll play a passage really slow and I will sing the note that is coming up next in my head as I'm producing the pitch on the current note. Um, then there's deep listening to your own product, whatever you're putting out. Uh, you can just close your eyes or uh, you can record yourself, but I often find that removing uh, the visual sense and closing my eyes allows me to deeply listen to the product that I am creating and to not um, overlook any sort of grit or anything that's in my sound. Uh, then there's listening for the sound that you want to hear. What I would do here is maybe pick an idol that you have and um, find a recording of something that they play that you also have and can play. And maybe hear them play a passage and then play that same passage, but don't even listen to yourself. Listen to their sound in your head. Mimic what they can produce, but through your bell. And then listening across to your section mates. Well, if you're making an acapella video or if you're playing along um, on some sort of you know, iMovie duet, uh, I like to think of my ear as like an extendable part which uh, like, kind of like Inspector Gadget, you can take it off and put it into your section and you're not even worrying about yourself, you're only listening deeply to your neighbor or uh, whomever is also playing. And then listening down. Uh, this is hard to do when you're alone, but you can um, analyze your etude or your repertoire and sort of break down the chord structure of it and then play that in your left hand while you're practicing along uh, on the trumpet in your right hand and that way you can produ produce the harmonies that are sort of uh, um, scripted inside the etude and you'll have a better sense of where you are harmonically as you shift through the etude. So I like to um, apply all of these, maybe not every day, but maybe one per day and the next day I'll kind of hit another uh, ear training exercise and um, I think that it's a really valuable tool. We're often too worried about our skill sets, our chops, our bodies, but we forget about the most valuable part of our musicianship.